I have to be cognizant of the time, but one of the things that has come up a couple of times now is what are your thoughts on an upright MRI and would you see that there would be any advantage in doing that in patients with CSF leaks? So the, the problem with the upright MRIs is that they are a really low field uh, magnet. They're like 0.5 or 0.625 um, and they're also um, stationary magnets. So they don't, they're not the high resolution ones that we usually use. So the image quality on those magnets is really just appalling. And I just don't think it makes any difference at all. I, I, I've never found them to be worthwhile. We used to have a stationary magnet that was upright in the triangle and several patients would get them and they just the imaging was just not not worth it <laughs> not worth the the cost or the time of getting it done or having it done so yeah okay excellent thank you so much another question that has come up a few times is that what's your experience been um, with receiving referrals from canada have they come mostly from physicians from patients and what do you think brings patients to your center as opposed to going somewhere else, perhaps? Ah, oh, interesting. Um, okay, so first of all, people from Canada. Um, so sometimes, um, actually, we'll get referrals from um, neurologists from Canada and, and from patients themselves. Uh, a lot of times we'll get referrals from um, patients when they've seen multiple physicians and they just feel like they're not being heard. So I would say that one of the reasons why people come to see us is because we listen. And, you know, we're, you know, one of the things I did not put in there um, that is a cause of positional headaches is POTS. I have a super hard time differentiating POTS from a CSF leak. I can treat a leak and, um, you know, you can treat POTS, but regardless, you know, we think about the whole patient, we're thinking about the differential of their headaches. We evaluate people for pressure related disorders um, and, uh, you know, we'll try things. So, I mean, I had somebody who came after epidural catheter placement and I didn't see anything, but it the it happened after the epidural catheter and we patched the patient and they got better. So sometimes, uh, and then the techniques that we use. So we don't just do a patch that's going to lay on the dorsal part of the spine, but we can do patches that will go circumferential around the whole lumbar spine. So I think the ability to do that technique, in addition to thinking about other differential considerations that I already kind of mentioned, is why people maybe come. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, the other thing too is that, um, you know, if people have cervicogenic causes of headaches, well, we can treat that as well because we do, we can we do CT fluoroscopic guided cervical epidurals um, just as easily as we can do anything else. When you have a CT fluoroscopic uh, piece of equipment that you can do imaging and procedures, it makes everything so much easier and different. And uh, yeah, it just gives you so many different options of things to do. So yeah, That's and really high quality imaging too. Of course, and of course the expertise that's there. No question about that. <laughs> We've had practice. <laughs> yes. um, another question that's come up is in patients that have connective tissue disorders such as EDS, do you find that there's a higher risk of doing blood patches in those patients and what might that be? Yeah, no, no higher risks at all. Um, you know, because in pa patients with EDS, you know, we're really s trying to solve problems. You know, I was uh, listening to, um, uh, Dr. Francomano's lecture, I have a patient who is in from New York who has been living in Durham now for like almost two and a half years. She had a lumbar puncture at NYU emergency department for um, not for headache, but for fever. So she didn't even have a headache when she went there and they did a lumbar puncture in that workup. They used an 18 gauge needle on that patient and she is still suffering from that lumbar puncture that she had, I think it's now maybe three or four years ago. Uh, and she's a patient who has a connective tissue disorder. So we have patched her and she's had surgeries at Cedar sinai and she's had surgeries with us and she's still suffering. So I think it's really important to realize that when you're taking care of patients who have connective tissue disorders, you have to be really careful. 
Um, so I'm always cognizant about that. And I'm just not sure that everybody is thinking about that uh, when they do it. The other thing too, is that some patients will have um, have had laminectomies because they've had surgeries and people will put needles through that laminectomy site into the fecal sac to do whatever, uh, lumbar puncture, and you should really avoid those areas. You want to avoid surgical sites because they are super hard to treat um, after that. It's hard to do a patch there. There's no epidural space. You, reoperating there is hard. So people should avoid laminectomy sites when they're doing any interventions at all. But yeah, connective tissue disorders. They aren't problems as far as doing patching, but boy, you want to be super careful. That's great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your presentation and answers. Uh, I think at this time, um, just so we're not delayed, we'll probably move on to the panel for the morning.